So in this video, let's talk about how to handle online critiques and how you could use it to become a better photographer. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. But before anything else, before we get deeper into this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. This particular channel is really designed more for um, online tutorials or online lighting tutorials but I do once in a while give a little bit of insights photography insights like this and I hope you do enjoy them please let me know in the comment section below if you enjoy videos like this aside from the online tutorials online lighting tutorials that I've been creating now if you want to see some of the images that I've created you could always find me on Instagram it's at Jiggy Alejandrino so I made this particular video because I've noticed this sort of trend that a lot of photographers, especially newbie photographers, have a tendency to be afraid to post images, especially in online groups from, that brings photographers from all over the world. Together with that, of course, you bring different personalities. Now, it's always good to have a community like that for online critique or for photo sharing, but you have to approach it in a certain way so that you don't get too affected by it. And these are a few ways that I've actually been um, living by that I want to share with you so that it could help you take those critiques in order for you to become a better photographer. Well, the first one is that I myself am my own harshest critique. Every time I take a particular image, whenever I'm studying it afterwards, even though I know I know what I'm doing already, I still look at the images and say, you know what, I could have improved it. I could have posted her differently. I could have put the light differently. I could have angled my camera a little bit differently. Those little things is what really transforms a great image to a fantastic image personally. So it's always nice to be aware of everything. So it's better to critique the images yourself first. However, there is a limit to that. Um, you're able to critique your own images properly when you have the necessary knowledge for you to be able to critique. That's why some of us, well, when I first started, I loved posting images online also to learn from those that, that have been there before and may have some experience that they would want to share. So with that, I'm gonna to go to advice number two. The second one is that you use the critique to see whether or not you are actually just nitpicking your image, what well, I use that, whether or not I am just nitpicking my images or it's really there. So what I love doing really is whenever I take a particular photograph, I pinpoint areas that I've seen that could need a bit of improvement. Now, as being, being your own harshest critique, sometimes it's very difficult for you to stop. You tend to nitpick and say, oh, you could have done this, 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 and that. So whenever I would post a particular image online, I would expect people to react and say, oh, you could have done this, you could have done this, or you could have done that. However, if they don't say anything or the community doesn't say anything, then it makes me think and ask myself whether or not I'm just nitpicking my own image when the particular image is actually good enough or good because never, never accept good enough because if it's just good enough, that means you can make it better. Now, the third advice is that whenever you post that particular image, you always have to have it in your head too, that they could see something that you didn't. So it goes back to advice number one. You can be your own harshest critic, but you don't know everything. So there are things that other people might see that you didn't because you were so immersed in the particular image that you took. Let's say it was a, uh, like, for example, with me, I'm very biased when I take pictures of my wife. I can't, say, I can't see anything wrong with it. That's why it's nice too to get the third person's perspective. Well, in this case, a lot of people's perspective on how that particular image looks like. And if they do see whatever it is that you didn't see and they talk about it, then now comes advice number four. When you no need, sorry, advice number four is when you need to master the ability to sift through useless comments and good comments, okay? They're really, that this really happens because there are some people who would just critique 
for no reason at all. No, you, you, should, you should have done this, you should have done that. This is how it should be. A lot of noise. But how do you then sift through what's noise and what's actual advice? It's when people really want to help you, they will say, you know what? You could have actually done this. You could have shifted the light this way in order for you to be able to get this effect. Meaning they will not just critique, but rather they will give you advice to help you out. Normally, that is the advice that you would want to focus on. But again, there are some people who just really want to say some stuff, but take it with a grain of salt. Look at it. They may be right. Again, as number three, they may be right. But of course, always give more importance to those who are actually offering to help. They don't necessarily have to help in a way that it's in your face that you have to listen to what I'm saying. They just give their two cents worth and it's really up to you whether or not you want to take that advice or go in the direction that you really want to go. Now, the last one, which is for me the most important, is that you don't need to engage. You don't need to defend yourself. There is no point in defending yourself. Why are you trying to defend yourself? They are not your client and you're just going to get stressed trying to defend something instead of just saying, you know what, they may have a point. I Maybe this is what I can do to improve my photography. There is no room really for any arrogance in, in this particular aspect and saying that I don't need your critiques because then why post it in the first place? Um, you're putting it in a public space. People will be entitled to their own opinions and they can speak out and say their own opinions. Now, engaging will just prove will just prove that you're out there trying to prove something. When in reality, if you have nothing to prove, you're normally just very quiet. So the best is never really to engage and never to try to even defend yourself. Because by doing that, by accepting all the, all the reasons that I gave you earlier, those things will help you become a better photographer and it will give you a stress-free life. Now, I'm pretty sure this particular video might be open to some critique also. So for me, I welcome it. So if you guys have any comments or suggestions or something that I could add to the list or something that you could disagree with, by all means, leave it in the comment section and let the other viewers see or understand or read whatever it is that you want brought out there also. But let me repeat. The first one is that you should always be your harshest critic. Very, very important. It's always trying to be the best possible photographer that you can be always wanting to improve. improve. Next is that you use critique as a way to see whether or not what you're seeing that's wrong in your image is really just nitpicking or it's really there. Number three is that you always also have to accept that these critiques could be correct and they may be right and they may see something that you didn't. The fourth, of course, is that you don't have to listen to all the noise. You always have, you don't necessarily pick who you want to listen to just so that it makes you feel better, but rather have a logical way of looking at things. Some people may see, say things harshly, but they make sense. So always keep an open mind whenever you're reading these critiques. And number five, no need to engage. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And as I said earlier, if you have anything to add to this list to make um, accepting critiques even better, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to the channel and while you're, while you're at it, click that notification bell and don't forget, like this video too. Now, if you guys want to see some of the images that I've created, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.